Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a software engineer at Synadia. Today I'm going to show you a Jetstream Hello World example using the NATS client for Java. Recently, streaming functionality has been added to the NATS server and to the clients. We call this Jetstream. Today I'm going to show you the Jetstream functionality that's been added to the Java client. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the NATS server and we're going to run it with the Jetstream flag. And we'll just let that sit in the background. In our code, the first thing we need to do is connect to the server. We're going to connect on the NATS protocol. We're going to connect to my local machine on port 4222, which is the default. So there's two areas that were built into the Java client. The first area is the Jetstream management functionality. This is the functionality that allows you to add a stream, to delete a stream, to update a stream, get some stream information, it also has functionality regarding consumers and it has functionality regarding messages. But today I'm just going to show you the stream, the stream configuration options. When we create a stream, we have to configure it. Here you can see that I've added three different pieces of configuration options. There are several more pieces of configuration options. If you want to read about those, go read my blog on our website and I go into the stream configuration options in detail. But for now, we're just gonna do the basic options. So first, we're just gonna call the stream hello. We're gonna give it one subject called world. Uh, streams can have multiple subjects and they can have wildcard subjects. If you're familiar with regular NAS messaging, this is the same exact concept. In fact, subjects are the same concept in both regular NATS messaging and in Jetstream messaging. Uh, the one difference may be the fact that this subject is constrained to be part of a stream. And so if you configure uh, retention options, for instance, the maximum number of messages or the maximum bytes or the maximum age of a message, uh, the messages in these subjects that are part of a stream will be constrained by those options. The other thing of interest here is the storage type. There's two types of storage. One is memory and one is file. If you need to persist your messages over instances or, or runs of the server, then you need to use the file storage. If you, don't, if you just want it fast and you want it in memory, uh, when the server goes away, the messages go away, but that may be an option and it's a, probably an option for a, a lot of people. There's also replication options. So if you are replicating across multiple machines in a cluster and you're in memory, if one of the servers goes away, those, those messages will come back, but they're only held in memory. The next thing we want to do is, so in the first line where we created our Jetstream management context using the NAS connection, now we want to use that context and add a stream with the configuration object we've built. So this returns a stream information object. And we'll go into detail. In fact, I'll show you that. This line here, so we added this little, be, little piece of functionality to the Java client that allows you to print out an object in a nice JSON formatted way. And once we run it, we'll sh I'll show you that. The next thing I want to do is I want to publish. So I need to get a Jetstream context, which is different than the management context. Remember the management context has specifically management functions where the regular Jetstream context has publish and subscribe functionality. So here we're just going to publish a message to subject to, uh, excuse me, to the subject world and the data of one. Now, when we publish, we get an app from the server. This tells us the server has received it and has done with the message what we told it to do in the configuration. It has replicated it or it has managed the rest of the stream. Whatever it is, the server says, I've got it and I'm done with it. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to add that here. Uh, again, I'm just going to print out the act when we get it. 
then I'm going to print and then I'm going to publish the second message and then I'm going to print that out. So going down here, so now that we've published, we want to get the messages. In order to get the message, we're going to subscribe to a subject. So using the same JetStream context where we, we got up here, we're going to make a subscription. And in this case, we're going to subscribe to the subject world. Once we have a subscription, we can get the next message. As soon as we subscribe, the server starts sending us message. This is called a push subscription. The server pushes message, messages to our client. So we get the next message. And a feature of the Jetstream functionality is the fact that we are going to acknowledge to the server that we have gotten a message that it has pushed to us. Now, the reason we do this is there's configuration options on consuming messages that say, if I don't get, if I don't acknowledge a message, send it to me again. So since we've gotten this message and we're going to process it, we tell the server, hey, we've got it. If you want, you can configure your consumer to say, I don't want to acknowledge. Just send me messages and it's up to me to worry about it. So once we get the message, we're just going to print out its subject and print out the data to confirm that we've got the actual message we want. And so the next thing here, this is an interesting and new part of Jetstream. So even though this message looks like a standard NATS message, it's actually under the covers, it's a Jetstream message. A Jetstream message comes with metadata. So not only am I going to get the subject and the data, I'm going to get the metadata, which tells me this is the stream that it was published on, and this is its sequence number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print that out, and we can look at that later. We're going to go get the next message. We're going to acknowledge it. We're going to print that out. So let's go run this. So remember, we got the stream information and we printed it out, and that's what that looks like here. The stream name was hello, the subject was world, uh, the source type was memory. We didn't set any of, the op any of the other options. So for instance, max messages is minus one, or in this case, what that means is unlimited. And since we had not published any messages at the time, the stream state says basically, I don't have anything in it. There is a Jetstream management uh, method called GetStreamInfo where you can get the stream information as it is right now. So if we did that after we publish, we'll see that there's two messages here. And I'll show you that in the command line interface, the command line client. So when we publish, we publish two messages. That's the first app. Notice its sequence is number one. And the second one, is sequence is number two, and they both were published to the stream hello. The stream, not the subject. So then we read the message. It was on subject world, and its data was one. Remember I told you about its metadata? If we look, this metadata matches the sequence that was received in the publish act, and this metadata on the second one also matches. We have consumer sequences. So this is the server telling us this is the first and second message that you read from me. So what this what this matters is is what we created was what was called an ephemeral consumer. And this is a temporary consumer that we're just going to get messages. There's something called a durable consumer that allows you to start and start start and stop subscribing, but be able to continue subscribing at the same part of the stream that you stopped on. So you could have a VM, a client, it could stop and then get restarted and then be able to start receiving messages at the same place you left off. So I want to quickly show you the command line interface. The command line interface is a tool that's built to give you 
as much information as you need about streams. It allows you to do a ton of, it's a client in a, on its own, but here I'm just gonna show, use it to show you uh, information about the stream. So the program's called Nats. I'm gonna get stream info and our stream is named hello. So you should notice it has stream configuration the same way the Java client did. Uh, it shows the subjects, it shows the, um, the fact that it's in memory. And you can see, for instance, where I had minus one in the configuration, this shows it is unlimited. And it also shows that there's now two messages in the stream and there are 48 bytes. So there you go. There is the Jetstream Hello World example. Thank you for watching.